This is a Kenny Garrett mine, but it sure doesn't sound like it. Something is missing. Now let's try it with bebop articulation. Hey guys, Nathan Grable here, or you may know me as Saxologic. So fun to be joining this channel now, I'll be seeing you here more often. For today's video, I want to talk to you about bebop articulation, as well as how to actually do it. It's the thing that turns your fast lines from this... ...to this... So... What even is bebop articulation? Well, the founders of bebop, Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker, utilized some unorthodox articulation techniques in order to capture and retain the spirit of swing within these new blazing fast tempos. As you know, in medium swing tempos, we play our eighth notes in a lopsided rhythm based on a triplet feel, like this. However, as we pick up the speed to play lines at rapid bebop tempos, our eighth notes naturally turn back into straight eighth notes, or else they'll sound a bit goofy. But playing them as completely slurred straight eighth notes can sometimes be a bit bland. As you can hear, bebop articulation really opens the doors to creating a personality within our rapid lines. However, initially, these techniques are deceptively difficult. Just simply trying to imitate our hero's articulation can feel next to impossible to do if you don't already have a strong idea of what are these bebop articulation techniques and how to do them. But the good news is anyone can learn these skills. I'm going to share with you three steps anyone can learn to really gain a deep understanding of what your jazz heroes are doing. All of these techniques are found in Chad Lefkowitz Brown's Jazz Articulation Masterclass. For more than an hour, he provides a clear and in-depth explanation on his entire pedagogy on this concept, and it even comes with a PDF of various useful exercises. The link to downloading this can be found in the description below, and you can use the code CLASSLOGIC for $15 off. Alright, let's go ahead and dive into the first technique. Sounds weird, right? This is a fundamental technique in bebop articulation. It's got many names, such as ghost tonguing, muted tonguing, and in the master class, Chad calls it dudin tonguing. To achieve this, our tongue covers part of the tip of the reed, muting its vibration. The uncovered part continues to vibrate, and this is what gives us that dampened sound. And when we pull the tongue off the reed, we get a nice, accented, punchy sound. Now, which part of the tongue covers which part of the reed is completely up to the player. Some people feel most comfortable using the tip of their tongue to cover a corner of the reed or the middle of the reed. Some people prefer to use the middle or back of their tongue. In the master class, Chad actually talks about how he does it. For me, I'm always just tonguing in the middle. I even use the middle of my tongue. Now, some people use the tip of their tongue, some people use the back of their tongue. I take the happy medium with everything. I, I use the middle of my tongue. There is no universal way to do it. The best way is to just experiment till you find something that works for you. I personally have my tongue slanted using the body of it to press down a corner of the reed. I don't know how this came to be. It just sort of happened and I stuck with it. Anyway, once this concept is understood, we can go ahead and move on to step two. Do din da o. Do din da o. Learn those four syllables. Because there's no official shared system on how to notate bebop articulations, Chad took the liberty to brilliantly summarize it all into just these four syllables. <laughs>
Everything we just heard there can be explained by just these four syllables. Do din da o, do din da o, do din da o. Do's are tongued notes on downbeats within an ascending line. Dins are ghosted notes on upbeats within an ascending line. Da are tongued notes on upbeats within a descending line. And u are the notes we slur into on our downbeats within a descending line. As you get used to saying these syllables, you'll notice that they sound exactly like they would when we apply them to our horn. Now that we understand this, we can move on to the final section of this video, where we can actually apply these techniques to various exercises all found from Chad Lefkowitz Brown's Jazz Articulation Masterclass. Let's take a look at his exercise based on the major scale. If you look at the syllables within any of his exercises, you'll notice a pattern. I find it helps to first say them slowly, then gradually speed it up till it starts to feel natural. Do din do da o da o din 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 do. Then on the way down, do din do da o da o da o din do da o da o da o din do da o da o da o din do da o da o din etc. Then personally, I whisper it just like I'd really do it on the saxophone. First going up. And then going down. Then it's pretty immediately transferable to the horn. Now, let's take a look at Chad's articulation concept through one of his custom approach note and enclosure phrases. First, I'll say it slowly. Now for myself, I'll whisper it just like how I would play it on the horn. Again, there is a variety of many more exercises from this masterclass, which Chad explains beautifully through his 75 minute video included. I found that once you start to get comfortable with several of these different configurations, it all starts to feel as natural as talking. By that point, it really starts to bleed into your own improvisation, and whenever you hear a bebop legend, you just naturally know what's going on. And by that point, you won't really have to think about it much anymore, and it all flows naturally. Till then, playing these exercises slowly, carefully, and thoughtfully is the path forward. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Let us know if it helped, as well as what other video topics you'd like to see from us. Do feel free to click the like and subscribe button below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.